and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica. I am author of Confessions of a Homeschooler website. I am also a working parent as well, so I work from home. So we have been homeschooling for approximately uh, 12 or so years. We started when my oldest was in preschool. She is now 17 and in 11th grade. I've also got a fifth grader, an eighth grader, and a 10th grader. So we've got kind of the gamut of ranges going on and we have been through it all. So hopefully you'll find the information that I'm about to share with you helpful on just getting a hold of your day, getting an overall good routine, um, being able to still get some work done at home and get your school done and still have time together to enjoy as a family. If you are looking for more resources, I do have a Homeschooling 101 book. This is a step-by-step -step guide on getting started, knowing your state laws, pretty much everything you know to start homeschooling your students. And then I also have another book called Taking Charge of Your Child's Education, which just kind of encourages you on how you can influence your children right in your own home, especially if your kids are going to public school, but also if you are homeschooling. I'll put a link for all of my resources below this video in the description box below. You can also go to confessionsabouthomeschooler.com. There will be links for everything there as well. Um, speaking of my website, I do have a new to homeschooling page on there. It's right on the very homepage and I also have a help by grade level page. I highly suggest that you click either one of those two tabs if you are looking for specific help. On the help by grade level page, I have lesson plans, daily schedules, curriculum ideas, and then a ton of different posts that have ideas that you can do for that specific grade level. So I definitely recommend that page. It is all free for you to view. A lot of that information is also in this Homeschooling 101 book. So let's go ahead and get down to the reason that you are probably here today, and that is because you may be finding yourself in a position where you're doing school at home due to the coronavirus pandemic that we are all going through right now. So I have a few tips to help you guys out. Hopefully you will find them helpful. Let's go ahead and just dive right in. So I did a poll on my Instagram uh, yesterday. This is, today is March 18th, 2020, if you are watching this. Um, if you're watching this in the future, hopefully this will still give you some helpful tips and hopefully you can see that we've come out of this all right. So the first poll I did was asking people if they had experienced closures, school closures, store closures, pandemic kind of panic buying and all of those things. And as you can see, 99% of us are experiencing that right now. I'm not sure who the 1% is, I honestly almost think they may have clicked the wrong button, but in any case, I want to just show you that you are not alone. My second poll that I did was asking readers what they were doing about play dates and keeping their kiddos at home, how many people were allowing play dates and how many people weren't. I've got 85% not allowing play dates. So I wanted to just show you those statistics to tell you that you are not alone. You and me and everyone else, we are in this together. And more importantly, you and your neighbors are in this together. So what that can kind of mean for you during this time is that you can band together with your fellow neighbors who are going through the exact same thing with the exact same school district and help each other out. If you are not already, you may want to check out Nextdoor. You can do it on your um, computer. You can also download the app on your phone and sign up for your community. That is where community members can talk back and forth and share information. Um, you might also want to check and see if your uh, neighborhood has a Facebook group. We have one here and it's been really great. A lot of the parents are putting up ideas on ways kids can still interact um, but still be kind of physically distanced from each other. It really helps you you feel like you're not alone in this time and especially when you're doing school at home when you haven't been prepared to do that before a lot of parents are helping share resources tips ideas and things like that so definitely check those sites out to keep yourself community connected So let's go ahead and get down to the school at home part and then I will also talk on how I work at home as well as do homeschool. So the first thing which you probably are already doing is staying in contact with your local school district. A lot of school districts are doing everything they can to help their, make this time easier for their families. Some school districts, ours in fact, are offering free breakfast and lunches for students. It's kind of a drive up, pick it up and go type of thing. They're also offering free books for kids and I think that's a great way for them to do a community outreach in a safe way. They also also have links on their website, online resources to help keep your kids busy and engaged while we're kind of navigating this time. Right now our schools are only closed for a few weeks. It may be longer. I know a lot of you guys have schools that are closed for eight or more weeks. So just keep in contact with your school district. I think they're doing a really good job to get information out to you and let you know what's expected of you and your student during this time. 
So onto a day-to-day -day basis. My first and probably most important advice to anyone who is homeschooling or doing school at home or whatever is to just create an overall daily schedule. And I use the term schedule loosely. Um, it's more of a rhythm or a routine that you can get into, especially if you're being um, thrust into doing school and it's all brand new to you. Um, having just a basic set out routine is something that has really helped our family. I do have a free printable, free downloads. I will link those below this video as well. Um, they do have time slots in them and then I have one that's just completely blank. You can kind of write your own times or just not do times at all. You can do morning, afternoon, evening, um, whatever works for you. Be flexible during this time. Give your kids a little bit of grace. They're getting used to a new schedule just like you are, but just having an overall routine that you're doing every morning. We still get up, we get ready, we eat breakfast. In the morning time, we do our harder subjects of school, just kind of get those out of the way. Then we have lunch together. So afternoons are kind of free time for us. Kids can have some screen time. Uh, we might bake some cookies. We might play a game play cards, something like that. Um, and we also take walks as a family right now. We are still trying to get out every single day while the weather is allowing. It's nice and sunny here today. Um, and we just take walks and just get everybody out of the house, get a little bit of physical exercise. As Soon as the weather turns, if we are unable to get outside, we can definitely still do things like just dance kids. We have a ping pong table, so we play ping pong. Um, we try and do things that are keeping us active and our brains engaged um, rather than sitting on screen time. But I will say that right now we are allowing our kids some screen time more than usual probably just because of what we have going on and I think that that's perfectly okay. So like I mentioned I'll put links for our daily schedule below. I also have daily schedules by grade level on my website. You can find them on that help by grade level um, tab right on the home page but I also just have kind of a basic one that you can kind of write down and just get yourself into a groove for what life is going to look like right now. So hopefully you'll at least find that helpful but please remember to be flexible. Get into a rhythm or a routine or whatever. It doesn't have to be a you know time slotted daily schedule um, we have that written out on our website however um, it does not mean that we follow it to a T everybody kind of works at their own independent speed so it might take one person longer than another that is totally fine as soon as that person is done with their subject they can move on to the next one and the next one and the next one if they are done before our lunch break they're welcome to have a little bit of free time before that while the other kiddos are finishing up their morning subjects as you can see behind me, we do have a dedicated school room. That's because we've been homeschooling for years and we find it easier to have somewhere where we can kind of go do our work and then we leave this space and go sort of live our lives um, in other areas of our house. You probably don't have something like this set up. If you have a dining room or a kitchen or couches in your living room, that is a perfectly acceptable place to be doing school right now. If your kiddos are comfortable laying on the couch getting their stuff done, as long as they're working diligently, I say go for it. Let them sit wherever they want. Um, I do like to sort of keep them all in a general vicinity so that I can keep an eye on everybody and make sure people are getting things done. But that is really kind of my only rule for right now. If you have the capability and this is going to be a longer term thing for you, you may want to consider setting up a kind of official school area. It doesn't have to be super official, possibly a dining room or somewhere where your kids can lay out their schoolwork and not have to clean it up for meals. Um, kitchen tables are fine when you are in between meals, but a lot of times you'll find that kids have all their stuff spread out. Now it's time to eat and we have to clean everything up so that we can eat, get everything back out, and it just can be kind of a hassle. So if you have a living room or a dining room, that might be a better option for you right now. That way you're not having to clean up school materials in between every time that somebody needs to eat. I think dining rooms work well because everyone can kind of sit around a larger table. They can kind of each have their own area but still spread out where you can also keep an eye on them and answer any questions or give any help that they might need during that time. But like I said, it is absolutely not necessary for you to have a set area to do school. It just can be helpful if this is going to be a little bit longer term for you. The next tip that I have for you is to set up a daily one-on-one -on -one meeting with your kiddos. We just started doing this because as you know, we have high schoolers now with four kids. There's a lot of different grade levels happening. And as the kids get older, they're doing a lot more independent work, which means that I need to be able to facilitate their work, but also give them the space to learn independently. And it's an important life skill anyways. During those meetings, I go over all the work they accomplished that day. We grade everything, kind of do it together. If, they, if they're getting something wrong, we'll walk through it at that point. 
um, and then we talk about what they're going to be doing the next day and I think that's really helped them out we all have a sense of wrap up okay you're done with your school for today you are free to go do whatever you would like that also helps you from feeling overwhelmed with how do I grade all this work or make sure they're getting all their school done um, and that kind of thing now if you have younger kids you may want to do a meeting a short meeting kind of at the beginning um, where you're like okay this is what your work is for the day if there's any lesson or instruction you need to give them at that time you can kind of do that you can also kind of sit and work with them if you do have older students and younger students I highly suggest getting the older students going and on their way and then sitting down with the younger student um, next um, and that kind of helps because they need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one help and that way your older students are, are not waiting for you um, they can go do their own thing and your younger student is having that one-on-one -on -one attention from you I do also have a post on how to teach multiple grades with a lot more tips on how to manage all of those grade levels on my website so I'll make sure to link that below for you here as well So let's talk about working from home and homeschooling. I know this can be really challenging, especially if you have younger kids. One thing that I'm finding really helpful right now is a lot of places are putting free lessons online, and then there are a ton of free ideas of games and activities and things that you can do with your kids, especially if they're younger, to kind of keep them busy right now. But you may still be having to work from home, and that can definitely be a challenge. Um, how I've kind of managed that over the years, and it will really depend on what your work schedule is, when your office is needing you, and things like that. That. But for us, we do school in the morning. I make myself available to our kids during that time. I try not to do any work during that time if possible. That way I'm kind of open and able to help if needed. And then I do all of my work in the afternoon. My work is a little bit more flexible so I can do emails and make printables and you know make videos and things like that all in the afternoon once the kids are kind of done and off doing their own thing. That may or may not work for you during this time, especially if you have kind of a normal nine to five job and your, your office is needing you during the day. If that is the case and it's gonna vary a little bit based on the ages of your kids. You may just need to uh, readjust your schedule. So it might be like, okay, hey guys, mom needs to work from this time to this time, and here's what I want you to be doing while I'm doing that time, and that might be something that you know will keep them, you know, kind of quiet but occupied. Get them on some educational websites or watching, you know, educational videos, things like that that might kind of keep them occupied, and then swap it and then do school in the afternoons with your kids when you're more freed up from your work time. So just be flexible during this time with your work and your school that you're trying to manage I know this is a new experience for most of you and it just takes a little bit of time to get in the groove for both you and your kiddos to realize mom and dad are working and we need to kind of be quiet during this time but we'll come together right after that and we can get all of our stuff done so I think flexibility is probably going to be key here for most families right now if you have younger kids that can be a little bit harder because you're constantly having to keep them entertained and engaged so I suggest setting up a work area where you can also keep your littles close to you and we do something called work boxes in our homeschool um, there are these drawers back here that you can see and when they were younger I used to fill each drawer with a different activity for them to do and they were um, able to go through those drawers they opened them up one at a time pulled out whatever activity was in there and then they would work on that while I was maybe helping an older student and I think that that could be beneficial right now while you're trying to work from home as well you might not have fancy drawers or anything like that but you don't have to maybe put different games in Ziploc baggies put them all in a little tote bucket and then have your kids go you know sit close to you but go through some of those games while you're trying to get some work done play-doh is always good if you can work in your kitchen for a little bit give your kids some play-doh have them sit down play-doh tends to keep kids busy for a very long time it's a relatively quiet activity um, and it's kind of engaging they're not sitting on an iPad that said if you need to you have important business calls break out the ipads get them on some kind of a fun website where they can play a game it can be educational or not let's face it we're kind of all in crisis mode right now and we got to do what we got to do to get things done i of course suggest a mix of hands-on things with the ipad kind of situation but there are a ton of educational ipad games out there as well that you can use during this time i have links for all of that information on my website i've also recently put out a toddler activity pack and a kindergarten activity pack they are kind Kind of meant to be a summer bridge type of activity pack or ideas to keep your toddler busy while you're working and homeschooling with older kids but I think they could be really beneficial during this time also make sure you're following me if you aren't already on Instagram I am doing my best to put up any kind of free resources that I'm finding right now um, to help you guys out a lot of places museums libraries and things like that are putting up free resources where kids can go watch videos on different things learn about different things all online and they're all putting them up free I even know of people who are putting up 
daily free art lesson plans, which is really cool. Um, and so there are a lot of people coming together right now to try and help make this time better and more manageable for you. But as a working parent, I think just being flexible, get out of the idea that you've got to bring school home and do it by the book at your house. Um, know that you've got a working schedule and you've got a school schedule and you've got to kind of balance those depending on how that's going to work out best for your family. So all of those free printables and resources are available on my blog and I will link them below. My next tip is to make sure you are working as a team. I could not do all of this by myself on a daily basis for the last 13 or however many years that we've been doing this. Four kids is a lot to manage. We have got four different grade levels. We've got a house to run, laundry, cleaning, all those kinds of things. And so we work as a team here. I highly suggest you use this time to teach your family to work as a team. You probably already are doing that. But we come together for meal times, we help cook. Some of my kids will be you know, in charge of lunch, making lunch or making breakfast. Um, a lot of times we cook together for dinner. Um, they set the table, they help unload dishwashers. Everybody chips in here. You know, Clean the house, all those kinds of things. We work together and I think especially in this time when we're kind of um, self-quarantining and some people are mandatory being quarantined right now. Working together is a must. It also helps keep people busy. It helps give them an ownership of their own home and what, you know, just keeping up with the house. And they may not love it in the beginning and, oh, we have to go do this chore. Oh, we have to go do this chore. Hopefully they're already used to having to do chores in your home, but if they're not, it's a great learning opportunity for them. This is what it takes to keep a household running. And if everyone is pitching in, it's not so bad. Um, it's not all placed on mom or dad. Um, you know, the kids see everyone working together. And then when you guys are all done cleaning and putting things away and making dinner and all those kinds of things, then you can go and have family time. And that is gonna be my next tip. Spend time as a family right now. This is a really unique time we are in right now. Everything is canceled, stores are closing. People are pretty much on either self-quarantine or mandatory quarantine at this point. And so use this time to focus on the positive build those family bonds, spend time together, and have fun together. And if you do a little bit of scheduling and organization for the earlier part of your day, then you can have family fun time in the evenings. And I think that goes a long way for just boosting everyone's morale. Um, and along with that, I highly suggest, if you can, to get outside. Once or twice a day at least, we take a walk around either the neighborhood or we do back up to open space. So we'll walk around that, take the dog out, just get everybody some fresh air. And we walk all the time and I usually just ask whoever wants to come and they kind of come. We are now sort of making everyone go and I did get a few grunts and groans the first few times but now everybody is like, hey, are we gonna go on a walk, mom? Hey, are we gonna go on a walk? And I think everyone is realizing that they like getting outside, um, they like getting some fresh air, some exercise, and we're doing it as a family which might be um, something that we don't always do. You know, people are always running in different directions in this day and age. So just being able to spend time together right now I think has been really beneficial for a lot of people. The world is slowing down and we might all just need to take that break. I encourage you as a family to look towards your community. This is a great time to teach your family and your kiddos to be community minded, not thinking just of themselves and how this is impacting themselves. A couple ways that might look are we are telling our kids we can't do a play date or we can't go to this function, or we can't go here and do this. We're not trying to be mean, but we're trying to do our part to take care of our community. The other thing you can do, and this goes back to the Facebook and next door pages, is check on your community to see if anybody's asking for help. A lot of times you'll have elderly in your neighborhood or immune compromised people in your neighborhood who are afraid to go to the stores right now or who are not able to go to the stores and get supplies, they may be asking for help and if that is the case, definitely try and reach out to them. See if you can go pick up groceries for them or medication or anything that they might be needing and help them out. Um, the other thing you can do right now if you're able is donate to local food shelters, food banks, things like that who are trying to get meals out to your community. Um, one thing that was kind of small on our part that we had our kids do and at first they didn't understand but I think they do now. Two of our kids work for Chick-fil-A. They're teenagers. They're obviously under still our home and so they don't really need the money. They are saving money for college, which is great. Um, but I know there are a lot of workers at their Chick-fil-A store who need that money to support their families. So we encourage our kids to release their shifts, give those up to people who may really need it, who might be a little bit older and that is their only income or who might be supporting a family. And at first they were kind of bummed because they want to go to work. They love working. Um, but I think now they're realizing, hey, I'm actually helping do my part to try and help my fellow community members. I 
also suggest you stay in constant communication with your family members, especially if you have older members who might be confined to their homes, especially if they're alone, calling them, FaceTiming them, seeing how they're doing, just giving them that um, personal contact every day will go a long way to helping their morale while protecting their safety. And lastly, I would like to encourage you to come together as a family and spend time in prayer. Right now, we are currently praying for our leaders of our country, our world leaders. We are praying for our community members. We are praying for our hospital workers, uh, people picking up our trash, grocery store workers, all of those people that are keeping our community running right now. We are thankful that we have the ability to be working from home, doing school from home, and all of those things we know are a blessing that not everyone has right now. We're also praying for people in hospital people who are um, financially strapped due to this epidemic, people who have immune compromised systems, the elderly, all of those people. We are just coming together every night and praying for everyone that we can, our family, our friends, and our neighbors. One of the verses I would love to share with you is Isaiah 26, 3. It says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And that's what we would like to do is to keep our minds focused and steadfast so that we don't give into things like panic and fear, but instead we use whatever resources as we can right now to try and help other people through this epidemic. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Hopefully you found the tips in this video helpful. Like I mentioned, I have a ton of free resources on my blog, www.confessionsofhomeschooler.com. You are also welcome to email me. There is a contact button on there, Eric, and it's also erica at confessionsofahomeschooler.com. We are doing our best to field all of those emails and get answers out to people as quickly as we possibly can. The resources tab on my website has a ton of different um, information on it as well, free printables, all kinds of things there. And then I also have that help by grade level, which probably will be helpful for you. Um, I also have a link to my store where I have all my books and all of my curriculum as well if you are looking for more information and in-depth activities for your kiddos. If you like this video, please make sure to thumbs up. Feel free to share it with your friends or anybody else who might be needing more help during this time. Thank you so much for sticking around with me today. I hope you guys all stay safe and healthy and I will see you on the other side. Bye.